Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about Georgia and the developments there in the Trump entanglement, um, what we have found out, what's being covered, and something that, I mean, honestly, I find way more interesting, something far more intriguing occurred than, than the big news. Um, so when this first started, when the videos first came out, I was like, I don't really see this as uh, being beneficial to the state side, to, to the prosecution side of things, because there was nothing in the videos, in the segments that were leaked, that, that would sway somebody to take a deal. Now, as things turn out, it was somebody on the defense side that put it out. It was uh, an attorney, Miller, who is representing Misty Hampton, so representing one of Trump's co-defendants. And he, he was just like, yeah, it was me. <laughs> he said, in being transparent with the court and to make sure that nobody else gets blamed for what happened, and so that I can go to sleep well tonight, judge, I did release those videos to one outlet. And in all candor, I need the court to know that. Cool. Cool. That's the news. That, that's, that's what's being covered. But see, <laughs> there's something that I find way more interesting. Because of recent developments, and I'm sure in general, the prosecution wanted a protective order put over some of the evidence. And that makes sense, especially given what just happened. But see, when they, they asked for it, most of the defense teams were kind of like, yeah, that's a good idea. Paraphrasing, of course. But they didn't really seem to have an issue with it. Most of the defense teams were okay with limiting the public dissemination of some of this evidence. So anytime you see a deviation, it, it's worth kind of noticing. Trump's traditional strategy has been to try to put information out into the public sphere and I'm just going to say gather support. Some might say try to influence the jury pool. I don't, I wouldn't say that. I, I think he's just trying to rally his base and all that stuff. So generally speaking, Trump world is opposed to anything that would limit things being shared. They want that information out there because generally the strategy has been to pick and choose things that would be helpful to them and get it out into the public sphere. But some of his co-defendants and their defense teams, they didn't seem to have a problem with the idea of limiting what could be shared. You got to wonder why. You got to wonder why. Um, you have to wonder why, particularly when it's, it's something that would presumably, the, the protective order would presumably cover the type of thing that was leaked, that was given to, uh, outlets. Um, you know, the, the proffers. People that haven't made proffers seem to want them to be uh, something that w wouldn't be released. You have to wonder why. Um, I, I, I can only really think of two reasons. One is that Trump world is, is very, very adamant about fair play and making sure that the criminal justice system functions as it should and, and they want to support that and they're willing to forego any publicity for that to make sure that that can happen or they just want to make sure that certain kinds of statements don't don't get out you know statements like proffers I feel like uh, the former president is probably going to get some bad news soon. <laughs> um, it seems as though there might be people considering 
making videos of their own. Um, that, that would be the conclusion I would draw, uh, at least as a possibility. Again, we don't know that, but anytime there's a deviation, I think it's important to look at it. And in this case, I really can't come up with, uh, with a lot of reasons for the defense, the multiple defense teams, to be, uh, let's just say, apathetic towards a protective order like this. It seems odd, and I feel like we'll see that material again, and I feel like when we do, Trump's going to be very, very unhappy. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.